definitely not going to wear those eclipse glasses while driving. But now I do want to go ahead and welcome in Dr. Eric Christian. He's a senior research scientist for NASA. Dr. Christian, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Thank you for having me. Well, this is really awesome. First, I want to get started with what is needed to make a total eclipse? So we are very lucky in that the moon in the sky is almost exactly the same size as the sun. And that allows it to fully block the sun, but also let us see the atmosphere of the sun, what we call the solar corona, down to almost the surface of the sun. It's really a unique formation in the solar system. Yeah, you know, it's really interesting because I've heard people say witnessing an eclipse, it's deeply emotional. It leaves you with wonder, why is it so moving to see? Because you get to see things that you don't normally get to see. You think of the sun as this really bright object in the sky, but it's got an atmosphere, the solar wind, that streams out in all directions at a million miles an hour. A total solar eclipse is the only time you can see that with your naked eye, and it's really a remarkable sight. Plus, the lighting is weird. It is it most reminded me of the old B-grade Western movies where you know they're filming during the day, but they put a filter on to make it look at, like night. The shadows are really sharp, but it's dark and dim, and it really is an amazing experience. Yeah, that's uh, crazy just to see it here on the screen. You can just see how dark the sky gets. Uh, if you want the best view, where do people really want to be out there? So anywhere where you've got clear skies is good. This eclipse is nice because the sun will be high in the sky. There are some eclipses that happen when the sun's close to the horizon, and those are tougher. But this should be, as long as the clouds are forgiving, this should be a great eclipse for anyone who's got clear skies. So as a scientist, what is the most exciting thing about this eclipse? So NASA is going to do science both on the solar corona and also we're going to be studying how the Earth's atmosphere responds to the shadow of the moon as it crosses the Earth. But to me, the most exciting part is that this is an opportunity to share the solar science that I do with the U.S. public. The entire country is going to be in the path of partial eclipse, and so everyone can participate. It's really so exciting. You know, I was also reading that you need to make sure your eyes are covered while the moon gets into place, but then you meet, need to make sure to remove the glasses to be able to see the eclipse. Can you kind of explain how this works? So even a little tiny bit of the sun poking out from behind the moon can damage your eyes. So do keep your eclipse glasses or use an indirect method to look at the partial eclipse. But once it gets to totality, the corona is way too dim for you to see it through the eclipse glasses. So you want to remove the, those glasses. And we advise that people actually spend their time looking at the corona and not all their time behind the viewfinder of a phone or a, a camera because your eyes will get dark adapted and you'll see more and more of the corona in more and more detail as your eyes adjust. That is good advice, but definitely people want to make sure not to burn their eyes. Uh, last question, I do want to ask you this. If people want to find the best viewing location, I know that NASA has like a site or an app. Where do they need to go? So if you go to go.nasa.gov slash eclipse2024, there's lots of information that shows NASA sites, places where events are happening all over the country, and that's where I would go. Super exciting. Dr. Eric Christian, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.